So hi, one of the good nights podcast here with Nick from Equipment. We're going to ask him some questions today. I'm going to start. So what inspired the creation of the band and what does the band name mean? Um, creation of the band was inspired just by the fact that I liked music. Um, <laughs> I was I was a senior in high school and I didn't really know what I wanted to do in music. I didn't really have perception of any scene or anything. I, I hadn't been to a house show. I hadn't really been to that many gigs. Um, but... I, you know, I just had a few favorite bands. I really liked um, Weezer, I, Elliot Smith. I liked Blink-182 earlier in my high school years. Um, American Football, for sure. Um, Tame Impala, just like a, whatever bands a high schooler that isn't like, doesn't have that many cool friends is into. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, but a lot of my friends were like into like bluesier, kind of like the more like, in my opinion, like boring indie stuff yeah. that was popular at the time like Lollapalooza core yeah um and I was like trying to escape that so I um uh made an EP in my room just by myself and I didn't really know what I was doing but I just kept like digging at it and then eventually I found permanent bandmates so it wasn't just a solo project anymore and I like actually joined the scene which was really cool oh, yeah um what was the second question uh band name meaning oh uh there isn't any, but my fake edgy one that I always use is that we're just sick of being used all the time. We're equipment. <gasps> That's that is really deep. That is really <laughs> deep. Thank you. <laughs> I cry sometimes thinking about it. So. Oh my god. <laughs> all right, um, so congrats on your newest release, All You Admire. How do you feel the response to it so far? The response has been amazing. Um, like just all the people that we've become friends with the past few years. Um just coming out of the woodwork to like say they liked it has been really amazing. And um, we're really nervous because our old music was, you know, I, all of our albums are so different. Like our releases, we really only have one full album, I guess, but our releases are also different. Like our last EP was like a more like pop punk kind of mm-hmm. just like, it's, it's more of like a rager, more of like a, like kind of exciting. And this one was completely, you know, more chill and subtle and, um, you know, just understated. So we were nervous that people were going to be like, oh, Equipment's, you know, they're a boring band. They kind of, they kind of lost their spark, but like totally opposite people. Some people said that like, this is their favorite thing we've ever done. So well, that's it's been great. Yeah. Um, definitely really grateful for everyone that said nice things. Oh yeah. yeah. It's very cool. I saw you it talking great. to uh, the losing score today on the timeline and they, you called it like the fall winter EP vibe thing. So it fits that perfectly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we definitely, I mean, I, when I wrote those songs, it was like chilly out. It was like, I just picture like all the walks I've taken during the fall. Cause that's the only time of year I like walking outside really. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like, that's like the soundtrack to it in my head, like those songs. So. Oh. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the EP name or cover art? Um, the cover art, well, I'll start with the name. Um, it's just one of the lines in, in the first song. Um, and you know, my drummer pointed it out. He said that that, that's a cool EP name. I think he was the one, um, because you know, the, the name and the cover art all just kind of came together Mm -hmm. pretty spontaneously. Um, and we didn't have cover art until after we recorded it. Um, my drummer sent me the photo that he took because we stayed in a day's in on the way to the studio. Mm. Um, and we booked it through Airbnb and they wouldn't let us in because they didn't believe it was like legit. Like the guy working there didn't know they had an Airbnb account. So he had to like wait till he got in contact with his boss and his boss was asleep because it was like 2 a.m. So anyway, we finally get in our room at like 3 a.m. Slept there for like four hours. But anyway, um, when we were waiting in the lobby, he snapped a shot of the ceiling. um, Mm -hmm. And it's like this really cool chandelier like shot. And you definitely can't tell that it's just like a boring ass hotel lobby. So um (laughs) I think it's kind of cool. I think it's like, oh, this this looks so beautiful. It's all you admire, but also at the same time, it's just like a cheap motel. So, all right, yeah. that's that's a cool backstory. It's horrible, but that's that's really cool. Um, if that hadn't happened to us, we wouldn't have got that photo. So exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, can you tell me what your writing process was like for this EP? Yeah. Um, so writing process for any of our music is pretty similar. Like I mainly just um, think of song ideas in my head over like a long period of time, like Mm -hmm. whether it's just a chorus or like a whole song sometimes. Um, But 
it usually doesn't come together until really right around the time we're going to record. Mm. Um, and for half of these songs, like two of the songs on the EP, my band hadn't heard them until we like went into the studio. Oh. Um, so they came off pretty raw because of that. Um, but like, it was cool. And, you know, we, we got to sit down and like actually workshop them like in the studio. And um, it was just, I don't know, like I'm pretty, I'm a pretty selfish songwriter. Like I have a hard time collaborating until we get to like the finishing touches. Like that's when my bassist Jacob and drummer Jake uh, add their own flair to it. But before that, I'm kind of like piecing everything together. Okay. So, and yeah, some of the songs started being written in my head like two years before we actually recorded them. Like the coattails, like main guitar riff. Like I had that in my head without lyrics for like ever because I couldn't think of lyrics for it mm -hmm. until like two months before we went in to record it. So oh, wow. my song, for, my like, process for that is just so unsustainable and random and <laughs> unreliable, but you know, it gets the job done. Yeah. So it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. So there's only four songs on the CP, but which song took the longest to write and which one is your favorite? Um, I guess by the logic of what I just described, Coattails probably took the longest. Like I wrote it, I started writing it around the time. Um, it was like right after Ruthless Sun came out, which is our album that came out in 2018. Mm -hmm. That's when I started first started having like ideas about what it could sound like. Um, and then I wasn't able to like actually write down words. It took me so long to actually, you know, build the song out of it. Um, Cause I had the vibe in my head and the vibe in my head is actually how exactly how it turned out. But like, I couldn't actually nail like the details for, you know, years. So mm -hmm. yeah, that one probably took the longest. The rest kind of came together really quickly. Okay. And, and then... your personal favorite. Oh, um, they're all just, you know, like, I, I can't imagine um, the EP without any one of the four songs. Like, we try to make an EP that feels like a full album, like, in terms of, like, scope, but it's really only four songs. Like, it's just, it just kind of hits four different corners of, like, the mm -hmm. spectrum. Um, but it changes all the time. I usually have to pick between Coattails and Sure or Steady. Okay. Um, Sure, Steady, I think, is, like, a really cool song that builds really well. But also, like, lately I've been jamming non-transfer a lot. Like, I just think we really, like, made it sound super pretty and catchy. And I'm pretty proud of that one, too. I mean, I'll, I'll, honestly, all of them. I, I really like all of those songs, and I can't wait to play them live. Definitely. Mm. All right. Uh, can you tell me where Headspace was while creating the CP? Definitely. Um, you know, kind of, like, a lot of it was like an apology. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I first started playing with my current bandmates, I, they weren't permanently in the band yet and I didn't really know what I was doing. So my expectations of them were like a little high. Um, and I was clashing a lot with our bassist Jacob just cause we have totally like opposite ends of the spectrum personalities. Like they're very kind of all over the place, full of energy all the time and you know, it was our first tour and we were five days in and I had never spent that much time with that person. Mm -hmm. So I was like kind of getting agitated and I got agitated in front of like another band that we were touring with. Like I was just was painting myself as like a real diva um, and I didn't really have any perspective. And I was like 19 um, and I'm 23 now. So just like reflecting on that time. Yeah. I like just hated how I like portrayed myself. And, you know, sometimes when you make an impression on someone, that's the last time they see you. So that person could be out there having that impression of you still. And I'm like, you know, embarrassed of that all the time for no reason. Um, so a lot of this album was about, you know, kind of not liking how you've portrayed yourself in the past and wishing you could go back and change it, but also kind of acknowledging that it made you who you are today and you got growth from it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what band or artist influences do you think you can hear the most on the CP? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, so usually I can just like say Weezer off the cuff, but like, honestly, this song, this album doesn't really sound like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe so. Okay. I'm going to guess like, I'm going to say three. Okay. One, um, 
definitely, even though this is our most mature thing, I would say, in my opinion, um, you can get a lot of like Blink-182 vibes in the instruments, mm -hmm. um, just like the guitar riffs and like how it's kind of simple. You can tell we're just like a three piece. Mm -hmm. um, and like, we just wanted to make like cool sounds with like a limited set of instruments. Um, mm -hmm there's not nearly as many synths or anything as there are on our other music. Um, so Blink-182, um, uh, I was listening to a lot of Touche Amore. Um, they're like a, uh, a spoken word kind of post-hardcore band, but like they've got like definitely some pop sensibilities. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I definitely was like thinking of them a lot whenever I wrote Leave It. Like it's kind of like inspired by that band a little bit like I don't, I don't think we'll ever fully curve into that genre but like having just one song that kind of sounds like that band was like the goal when i wrote that yeah and then um maybe like oso oh oso oh um yeah just especially for like non-transfer but like i liked having my voice kind of stay in the lower register and like mm -hmm. just kind of make it sound more soothing and try to hit a bunch of notes oh. um because um just like i think the fact that so much is going on in the instruments on this album and my voice kind of stays like chill. Like I, I really like that effect and also, so does that a lot. Mm -hmm. It also makes it easier um, for you to perform it live if you ever get the chance to. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of the songs that we have, like we have some recordings of them, like our old music. And it's just like some of them, it's just like screaming for four minutes straight and it's like, oh I God. can't do it. So, yeah. you know, part, part of me was like, damn, I can finally play these songs live without flaw. Uh -huh. so, yeah well, that's good um, that's exciting yeah probably those three and maybe if i were to add one more um now i'm gonna leave it at those three for now I can't think <laughs> okay <yeah>, that's valid <laughs> um uh, so this one should go really really fast off the top of your head i want you to describe this ep in three words okay okay three words okay. Yep. um cold cold um contemplative contemplative okay and self-aware which is technically self two words Ooh, we'll self hyphen it it's okay <laughs> well, um, so far is not... so is there a certain feeling you want your listeners to have while going through this ep mm -hmm. um i want them to be bobbing their head to it thinking like wow this is like this jams and then also yeah. hearing the lyrics and thinking like there's a really specific anecdote right now where this very specific situation wow mm -hmm. is this guy doing okay oh <laughs> yeah um no but in all seriousness too. like i just want people to uh feel like um you know i you know honestly people have been getting it 100 percent ever since we put it out like people have kind of perceived it exactly how we wanted it so can't really give any you know field guide on that they kind of get it already yeah, that's yeah yeah that's really good so where do you see the band in the next five years we don't, we don't really know um some people have been talking about this ep like we've changed our sound but like we just kind of wanted to like add mm -hmm. this sound to our like inventory i guess mm -hmm. okay. like we aren't going to stop making music like we've made in the past, but we're also going to make this type of music now and probably blend it together. So mm -hmm. in five years, we'll probably just still be making music that we want to make at the time. We definitely don't want to keep doing the same thing, which is why we like switching it up. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully just happy. Hopefully we're doing this and are still liking it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Solid. Uh, so for the last couple of questions, we're actually shift away from music and go straight to death row. So Boom. if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I was just thinking about this with my girlfriend. You were um, just thinking about this. Like yesterday or two days ago, mm -hmm. I was like, do they really go get you whatever you want? And, they were, and she was like, yeah. So <laughs> um, this is really tough. Probably, you know, some of my favorite foods I only like in specific, like at specific times. So I don't, mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know if I could say sushi or like fish and chips or something because no, like, those are things I, you know. Yeah, just get it all. Um, 
you know, I'm going to say, it's a very tough sorry. question. Yeah. One, it's okay. I got this. It's all good. It, it's going to have to be, um, honestly, chicken wings, okay. you know, either real or fake, like cauliflower mm -hmm. wings. I just like mm -hmm. wing sauce a lot. Like it's my comfort food. Mm -hmm. um and the drink <sighs> um just water i love water, water. okay is that carbonated <laughs> just, that sounds, or that sounds terrible um no it's all good no uh you know what i'm gonna change my answer i'm sorry okay oh, chicken alfredo okay. chicken okay. alfredo and, oh whoa you're um, changing everything okay okay um, chicken Alfredo and grape Kool-Aid. Grape Kool-Aid. Okay. Nope. Solid. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Like, I think that's what my brain wants right now. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? That's cool. That's a cool question. Oh, um, thank you. Well, nowhere that I wouldn't be strong enough to live there. Mm -hmm. Like, um, if, if I move to that world, do I, be, do I become like the people who live there? Like, let's say these people are really good at like jumping or something. Can I mm -hmm. also be good at jumping if yes. I move there? Okay. Yes. Um, I'll probably hang out with Mario, like the Mario Ooh. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just mm -hmm. because they are, they're always playing sports. They got golf, they got racing, they got, you know, a bunch of fun stuff. You know, I feel like I'd have a good time. I think mm -hmm. the only thing that would bother me is no one talks. So I'd probably oh. be a little lonely in that. Except somewhere. like Whoopi. That's like yeah, yeah. The only I mean, thing just, to say. I mean, like who who needs to you know talk whenever you're having that much fun, really? Yeah, got a point. Yeah, I don't think we've gotten that answer before. So that's no, cool. I'd probably change my answer if I thought more about it, but I'll stick uh -huh. with it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's come, fair. After this final question, but like, yo, wait, actually, I gotta change the last yeah, one. Yeah, like you <laughs> changed the death row one. Not? Uh, mm -hmm. so I have the honor of asking the last question and every single person we've spoken to has said it's the most important question. What is your favorite color? The it's the hardest color? question. It's a hard question, but I definitely have some like go-to answers I've been leaning toward lately. Um, mm -hmm. probably like, uh, like a mauve. Ooh, taste. Taste. Oh. Great color. Great color. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Sure. Um, I have. So we just released the CP, um, but we've been also spending this past season releasing music through our side projects. Mm -hmm. um, we have a band called Waving, and you could find our first EP called Binary Masquerade on Spotify. So Waving binary masquerade and it's basically the members of equipment except our bassist jacob plays guitar and writes the songs and it's really good way different sounds completely different um and then another side project i have is called loser camp i have it with my partner and i play acoustic guitar and she sings and plays other percussion instruments and stuff like that and it's more of like an anti-folk moldy peaches kind of like the soundtrack of juno um mm -hmm. a little bit so um yeah and i like those bands just as much as equipment so you know having people come over and listen to those bands too means a lot so yeah probably just those two things um and shout out to who am i gonna shout out today shout out to my boss um chris she's always really good at giving me time off work to do music stuff awesome oh yeah all right uh well thank you for sitting out with us this has been uh nick from equipment and we're the good noise podcast